oh, we've got this um, Virgil Abloh put together a car with Adidas, I guess. Adidas, Mercedes, Adidas, I think of German companies. So Virgil could design a car with Mercedes. I think it's an update of a G-Wagon, I'm pretty sure. There's a video here on YouTube detailing some of the things that went on the garden. It's in the description. It says, driving luxury forward and in an innovative design project, whatever that word is, Galland, Galland Wagon, yeah, um, the Mercedes-Benz and Virgil collaboration, which is pretty cool to see. Um, so let's see it play out. It's interesting that he did it under his own name and not under the off-white monarchy. Here. Maybe it's a an indication on what he ends up doing in the future in terms of his collaborations. I'm not too sure. But maybe this is just what he does in general. No, did... Was the IKEA stuff off white or Virgil? I'm not too sure underneath what name, but interesting to see regardless to see what he has to say regarding the car itself. <laughs> everybody to the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. Oh, My wow. name is Bettina Fetcher and I'm the head of marketing for Mercedes-Benz. Project Geländewagen sees Gordon Wagener, our Mercedes-Benz chief design officer, and Virgil Abloh, chief creative director and founder of Off-White, and Nant's artistic director at Louis Vuitton, join forces to reimagine one of our most iconic products. It's a G wagon and it? it's the kind of the quintessential car for any influence social media influencer out there. I wonder what it is about a G wagon that captured everyone's imagination online because it's weirdly one of those odd luxury cars that happens to be very practical too. It actually does what it says on the tin, but it just happens to look really amazing. I wonder why that in car in particular captured everyone's imagination. It's not like a maybe all that time the time that was the time that. Uh, Ford didn't update the Bronco maybe it was a reason or maybe the fact that it's just, I don't know I had no idea maybe it's just hip-hop um, or cultural relevance because it was very popular in the 90s Mercedes I'm thinking of the early 2000s early 2000s probably shifted to a few Japanese cars I remember Lexus is being big here in the UK but the 90s were definitely a Mercedes era maybe sometimes even in the 80s but I wonder why G-Wagons were really popular with those people especially now with the new with the kids online in it like kids I feel like the younger sort of like fashion-y kids that aren't necessarily, you know, hooking up with your gotti. You no, know, there's a certain group of people who want Lambo trucks and a certain group of people that want G-Wagons. Uh, that's interesting to see. Observe. This collaboration is redefining creative exchange and cultural enrichment in the digital space to inspire you to envision new possibilities. So come join. So what is it? Like a, is it like a Nike ID for like a G-Wagon? That sounds great, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit like, um, I, I, what, are they not making them for sale? Like, it's just, I don't know. Maybe it's like a fully immersive experiencing. Maybe when they kind of planned this already with COVID, with, with, with that having COVID in mind, it was meant to be like a traveling exhibition. Or maybe it's just a weird way to essentially hire loads of talented kids from the scene. Because if anything, Virgil's really talented. At what, what we really search Virgil apart would be his ability to kind of harangue all these talented little munchies, min, uh, his talented little minions, sorry, and tell them, hey, why don't you go and send your CV to Mercedes instead of asking to be my intern for a million times? And uh, maybe that's a thing, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't sound like they're selling them. Join us on our journey through the story of Project Gelandenwagen. Gelandenwagen. Oh, that was beautiful. So the G-Class is one of our most fashionable... They keep showing that white one. Does that mean that that's the one he designed? I don't know. ...products. It has actually remained more or less unchanged for the last 40 years. Wow. So you can say it's a fashion statement by itself. By the way, more kind of, again, I'm sorry to just keep stopping. If you want to watch it yourself, you know, I'll put the link down below. Don't get angry. But it's interesting to see why there's not more companies that do this. They just kind of make the same. And obviously, Nike is probably a good example. They obviously have a whole host of retros. But in terms of the auto automobile industry, there's definitely a desire, especially with some people out there who want like retro cars or old school cars, right? Or especially kind of really iconic models. I think I can think of like a Mercedes SLS that I've kind of been fantasizing over for ages or like a 90s Volkswagen Golf Mark III, right? There's certain cars that people always kind of will want, like, you know, the OJ Ford Bronco, right? Why don't they just have a division within these big car kind of manufacturers where they just make, remake the same 
kind of car, same model with kind of updated materials, processes, technology. But just kind of keep that shape, keep that ruggedness, keep that utilitarian look about things and just kind of give it to people. And then, of course, if you want to supplement it with an updated version, you can. But just really, just really kind of, you don't even have to have that many cars in your range that you sort of have that treatment for. It just be like marquee certain you know certain sort of cars like I, I can think of like a the original volkswagen golf right and maybe you pick a version that um looks the the most vintagey the most retro -y, and then you make sure that it's also the version that kind of you know doesn't break down as often and also the version that you can maybe upgrade with some you know modern bits of technology that would probably go a long way to really um make those cars pop more popular and also a great way to kind of acquire new customers The future is not written, but it will be what we make out of it. We are designers of the future. Hello, my name is Gordon. I joined Mercedes-Benz in 1997. Being in the role of Chief Design Officer, I did... <sighs> that reminds me of product design days, industrial design days. There's nothing better than just sitting, sitting down sketching concept cars and... Um, concept bits of just drafting stuff in it coming up with different ideas and just sort of letting your pen just a marker just glide across the paper fantasizing about things that would never make it into production right and then eventually you end up being you know a design assistant for some shitty studio they don't really give a toss about and then you end up interning for some crappy streetwear design brand and here you are it's not me right it's another person but i remember those days but this is so beautiful man I love it. There's nothing better than going into a um, really amazing design studio and seeing some of the stuff that they're just working on for fun. It's unfortunate that some of the stuff doesn't get put into production, but just seeing what they're sort of working on in their spare time always brings a smile to my face. Developed an aesthetic soul for that luxury company. It's called Sensual Purity. It's the essence of the heart and the brain. It is about the emotion and the intelligence. Oof. Hi, my name is Virgil Abloh. My design career has been equally informed by formal training just as much as life experience. Has Virgil run out of hair dye or something? Beard is looking a bit white there, my friend. Mercedes-Benz, for me, is a brand that embodies emotion. I don't look at it simply as a transportation company. I made a career of working in collaboration and conversation. I think that helps us get to ideas that we otherwise wouldn't develop on our own. Did you get any of that? Virgil loves saying bare words without saying anything in it. Love the guy, but God almighty, man. <laughs> the initial idea was to question, to sort of make this sort of twist on reality and speed to have this car that wow. is luxurious in a deconstructed way. We that looks hard, isn't it? We stripped off all materials. We cleaned up the exterior of every unnecessary part and we stripped entirely the interior Ripping wow. off. That again creates a canvas for something new. The next luxury will be what we make out of it. Whoa. It's an extraordinary approach in every direction. To me, this is a very progressive step towards the future of luxury. Not gonna lie, it looks really cool. Oh, I don't know how they, I don't know what it looks like yet, but that is cool. Project Geländewagen. We turned Ooh. an off-road icon into a race car. That looks insane, doesn't it? Have they lowered it? Added some side skirts. And it's got this weird sort of like shiny-ish finish. It's got the mesh on the window, similar to like a rally car. Like, wow. Bring it down onto the ground, put these racing tires on put the body claddings on and we put literally another art installation inside the jeep that, oh, 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 oh. that looks on so hard Project one formula one car the seats are racing seats from our dtm cars safety elements put into red i think it's very radical the idea of the paint that looks hard man you can't see that you can't not see this stuff on his feet and not get inspired to do your own thing and print your own little t 
t-shirt and make your own little hats and stuff like this is the reason why he's a good example for people you know especially the kids coming up yeah he might steal some designs and yeah you know he might have put out some uninspired collections here and there but just as a practitioner um you know as somebody out there doing the work on the front lines or on the sidelines ranting and raving as i'm doing right now this guy sets a good example man that is insane isn't it like he designed an absolute g he had like a g-wagon look at the tires as well it's uh, i'm assuming the old school sort of like formula one tires right with the bright um pirelli sort of font right he's just flipped it of course and put mercedes benz there like shit that was great hoping it makes it into production hoping it's not just a concept thing because we haven't seen it actually in real life yet well not real life but we haven't seen somebody sitting in it and driving it I'm not too sure if that's it a thing it's unique and so that it runs away from the idea of perfection the finish is typically like the underlaying it of a car the anything i don't like a oops this collaboration is the idea here is to do anything i don't like about is the headlights uh, but I guess you know he's got to do. He's added a bit of branding on there, isn't it? Race, the human touch. We have created a home scale replica Whoa. of the unique artwork that will be auctioned off at Sotheby's online in October 2020. Oh, okay. It's a it's a scale model. It's going to be auctioned off in Sotheby's. Okay. The winner of the model auction will also receive an exclusive access to the co-creators, including a personal introduction to the inspirations behind the artwork and the creative powerhouse's aspirations for it. Lastly, we have created an augmented reality artwork. Ah, oh, but it's not going to be made in production. That's annoying, isn't it? That's the thing as well. Raise expectations. With Elon Musk and Steve Jobs that exist prior, RIP, existed that who's around prior r.i.p we had this expectation that these bits of technology that look like they come from the future could be in our hands and it the iphone um you know the tesla um what they're doing with spacex stuff that elon musk is doing now with Neuralink, right they've, they've given us a an impression they've given us the they've given us um, this idea that these things are obviously possible to get irl and now they've what designed this amazing car it was bloody sensational and just made what a bit of augmented reality a uh, piece that you can what plop in front of your crappy council estate somewhere it's like what's the point in that i kind of wanted to see it in real life i wanted to see it's actually being made in put in made in production now it's going to end up in the collection of some you know rich guy or girl and it's just gonna you know be a thing i'm hoping a, a museum picks it up or somebody a culture institute gets it and sort of allows people to sort of sit inside and stuff that would be pretty cool but it's a kind of waste of opportunity. Would like to see them actually. I'm assuming there will be something else, and it won't just be this. I'm sure they're going to do an actual production-ready version of this in some way, shape, or form possible. It must be that you can explore in your own surroundings. Wow, it's pretty cool. That looks amazing. I love that. So thank you for being part of this journey with us. Or maybe they just had to do all this like last minute.com due to COVID. It could be a thing, right? It could just be like they decided to kind of go this route because they've got no, they've not got a way to do a kind of in-person activation. But, you know, regardless, that looks pretty fun and pretty 